we have this new, unusual, odd Justice League, that's how we fall into the third act, which is the final confrontation in the desert. We were supposed to visit a country that mimicked that desert in some way, so the Canary Islands or Morocco. Probably the biggest impact that COVID had on us was that nobody could travel. I would have preferred to have been on location somewhere where we had a beach and we were doing explosions and we had green proxy ships there and we had real Kryptonian soldiers firing at us. You can work hard or you can work smart. I think we did a bit of both on this film. And so our major desert scene was shot on sea stage at Leavesden and lit by the brilliant Henry Braham who used an awful lot of lights <laughs> to recreate a very sunny and beautiful desert scene and then enhanced by the incredible visual effects team. Three, two, one, action! What's important to me is that the light on the actors' faces is truthful. So we didn't use green screen because with green screen is you can never get the light right. A lot of the light emanates from the ambience around you and the color of the light em emanates from the ambience around you and it's very difficult to fake that. As soon as you create the right lighting environment in the foreground, then you create the right reference and the right lighting reference for everybody to work to. But without that, you have thousands of people all over the world working to an undefined brief. But if you define the brief clearly enough, then everybody can look at the same image and say, OK, that's what it should be. You're ready. The third act was definitely a challenge because we're not out on a desert executing big explosions with Kryptonian ships that are just well within distance that we can see. It's working with Cass and, and really kind of painting the picture so that they said, OK, there's a tank here, there's a Hummer here, even though there isn't anything there. So we really had to push our performers to really envisage everything outside of what you see in the foreground of camera. Cara Zora, we've been waiting for you. Our job got perhaps a little easier, just in terms of being in a controlled environment. Particularly when you're doing uh, all the stunts and the fighting and stuff, I imagine that would be really hard to do in the sand. It was intense, you know, to try and figure all that out so quickly. But Eunice was a great coordinator and very clear. We just broke it down, you know, and, and made it as simple as possible. You know, everything was kind of in little pieces. So it's, I, I didn't have to try and learn some super long, elaborate sequence. I was very excited to do that scene. <laughs> because I love to get beat in there, my feelings. And Michael Shannon is incredible. He was just always giving and making sure that I had the emotion and that he was providing while we were acting. And that was very special for me. It's so good. I was really impressed with Sasha because any time that you have to like do a bunch of stunt work and get kind of deep about it at the same time, she was just very grounded and focused and strong. You know, I could tell she just had been working so hard. Another element where we embrace the visual effects portion of the sequence was working with our Namek, who is like 11 feet tall, but we're actually working with a guy who's 6'8 in a motion capture suit. You can't dress a stuntman up in a big, big rugby suit or big, you know, American football suit and make him look like he should be that size. So that falls very heavily onto visual effects. But what visual effects like from our department is they like the interaction. So we've made proxies of Namek and we've made them so that they can be manipulated and puppeteered so that you can actually have a stuntman that's wrestling with uh, the top half of Mammoth and we can rotate him and tilt him. And you can get that dynamic movement that's so difficult to do without something like that. Modern filmmaking has not changed in many ways from the last 80 years, but the big thing that has changed is the scale of these movies and the requirement to communicate an idea to thousands of people. Those were challenges, but I think everybody rose to the occasion, and there's a lot of unique things that everybody will be excited to see on this movie. Come on, Barbie. Let's go.
Political party? 